Hello everybody, my name is Felix. Um, I'm the creator of Excel Wings and I'm really happy to be here tonight. I've, I think, never given a talk to like such a big meetup, uh, maybe conferences, but definitely not meetups. Um, I'm going to, as the title says, I'm going to talk about a few things, Python, Excel, and like basically how they're used in finance. And so for the next 25 minutes, I'm trying to kind of rush through number one and two. So I'm going to introduce ourselves a bit, um, the team behind Excel Wings, what we do besides Excel Wings. And I'm going to say a few words about spreadsheets and why they're still a thing in 2019. And then I'm actually trying to spend most of the time on the demo, like the interactive hands-on demo at the end, to show you a few use cases of how Excel Wings is really used in, in practice. And so for the introduction, um, Christian was also saying that they're a small team, so I guess that makes us a very small team. We're really just uh, three guys uh, working on, on, our, on our stuff. And our big mission is to, to provide really innovative solutions for Microsoft Excel. So Excel or spreadsheets have been around for 40 years, and the evolution hasn't been like always picking up with the latest trend, and we try to kind of improve that. And so, yeah, the, the one solution we have, it's been around for like five and a half years now, is the open source and free solution. It's quite popular, I guess, because of these reasons. And it's really Python for Excel. And we will have a lot of, um, a lot of insight during the rest of the talk. So I'm not going to go into details here. Then the other, uh, the other tool we're doing is called Excel Trail. And for those who are like into programming, it, you can think of it as a GitHub for Excel. And those who are not into programming, it's just like a better, uh, a better solution to the save as v1, save as v2. We will have a, a, small, <laughs> a small peek onto, onto Excel Trail, and actually I'm going to show you how the tool tools can be used um, in, in, in kind of an organized fashion together. So that's, that's already been the introduction. And now for the spreadsheets, in 2019. Um, this is a like a survey that, okay, you can't really read it, but, but I can tell you what's on it. Um, it's a survey from Anaconda, and it's really from 2019. It's, 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 it's really, really most recent. And so uh, the top third point there shows that 67% uh, of, the, of the survey participants, they say they like or strongly like Excel to work for data science. So that's, that's actually even for me, that was quite, quite surprising. Um, they were already beaten by, only beaten by Anaconda and RStudio. And then um, this one is uh, the first tweet of a lot of tweets that I'm actually going to show tonight. Um, so this one is really uh, kind of a career, career advice in, in 2019, also about Excel. Also, you wouldn't probably expect that. And um, so what I actually even find more interesting is like the, the, the reply to that, to that career advice tweet. So there's this ex-Apple um, employee who says that they were actually using spreadsheets to forecast the supply from one of the recent iPhones because the seven-figure IBM supply allocation tool wouldn't cut it. And I guess it's like one of the main reasons why spreadsheets these days are still a thing because uh, no matter like, you know, how big or how cool the, the dedicated tools are that you that, that are supposed to be taking over um, some certain functionality in, in, in your daily uh, business life, they will never cater for all the eventualities and all the kind of one-off things. And so if you need a, a solution by the end of the day, um, then you probably haven't even figured out who to contact at IBM. And so that's kind of where spreadsheets uh, still come in in 2019. Then um, for these, like, when spreadsheets make it into, into the headlines, then it's usually not a good thing. So um, this one is here from 2016. It's, it's, it was a Marks and Spencer um, yearly, no, quarterly sales numbers. So they, they reported 1.3% growth when, in fact, they later found out it was a drop in 0.4. So quite an embarrassment, and it was... Um, basically blamed on, uh, on an error in a spreadsheet. And then the next one is probably the, the most famous incident, uh, pretty much the same thing. So uh, a, a very, very big unfortunate incident for JP Morgan. And I think they blamed multiple different spreadsheet um, issues on, on that uh, loss there. Um, this is usually like the, the, the moment where people like start nodding in the audience and, and they feel, you know, they plead guilty. So this is like uh, 
yeah, this is one of the main reasons why we think that um, there are so many incidents with spreadsheets because simply people don't know if you know it was final final or if it was final final two <laughs> or if that has the edits from Bob or not and. Yeah, it's, it's just a usual mess. And then this is another thing that probably looks familiar to some of you. Um, it's also not, it's not my own invention. I didn't come up with it. It's actually taken from the, um, how we built our soccer tournament predictor. It's from Microsoft. They made a blog post a couple of years ago. And I think it went quite uh, popular. So that's one of the formulas in there. And I guess, um, it's just completely impossible to tell by looking at the formula what it does, and it's completely impossible to do any kind of debugging, uh, or you know, to to probably understand what the guy was writing like when he got back to it like five minutes later. So that's probably another reason why Excel spreadsheets aren't really good at um, a few things. And so uh, this is the final tweet I'm showing you. Um, so this is. Uh, a guy, John Lamb, he's actually working at Microsoft. He's doing all the things for Jupyter Notebooks and also for Python at, at Microsoft. So he's responsible for the Azure Notebooks. He's responsible for the Python extension in Visual Studio. And he basically, he shows another uh, big Excel incident, which was this um, Reinhard Rockoff growth paper. And again, these guys were like figuring out like a, a, a wrong, uh, wrong kind of threshold where uh, depth uh, ratio was, you know, getting to growth or decline. And so that actually was then kind of um, dragged on to, to basically um, being backed up with these wrong numbers to be um, kind of destroying the, the Greek economy uh, by introducing the austerity um, measures that apparently weren't uh, very well received. So um, his call here is that we need better tools and that's kind of really what we try to do with Excel Wings and, and Excel Trail to actually provide the tools to manage Excel workbooks. Because in the end, like our interpretation of the whole issue is that it's not really the Excel spreadsheet that is, you know, that is the reason why so many bad things happen. It's really how people deal with these spreadsheets. Like they don't have version control, they don't have um, automated testing and so on and so forth. So we say that Excel spreadsheets are just, you know, code is just a programming language. It's just a bit of a, a weird programming language. But when you start to actually treat it as a programming language, um, then you can definitely improve your workflow and you can improve everybody's um, perception of the tool. You can improve security, safety, and um, it's not such a bad, bad thing anymore because the other alternative is actually to move away from Excel. And sometimes that works. I mean, we've, we've done it like for, as a consulting company, we've done that for a hedge fund, for instance, and it can, it can work. It's, it's, it's actually a good idea, but um, it's just, you don't always have the resources. So it's actually a very costly um, adventure to do that. And also, like getting back to the first tweet, um, it's just not always possible, right? So you may, you may move away, but then you end, up ha you end up having this export to Excel button, which turns out to be like the most popular functionality in, in that new tool. So yeah, that's, that's a bit the um, current state of things in, in 2019 with Excel. And that will uh, let me over to the demo already. So I've brought quite a few demo cases, but uh, we might probably not get to all of them. So let me just check the time. Um, so like 15, 10, 10 minutes more, okay. So probably we're gonna get like halfway through and then I can just mention what the others would be. And if anybody's interested, they are all basically on, on GitHub. Um, and you can look them up yourself or you can talk to me after the, after the talk. Uh, during the upper, so we can always get into the um, other demos that I can't really show tonight. So um, I am gonna kicking this off. And by the way, I'm on um, a virtual machine here on, on Windows. Sometimes that causes a lot of confusion. So um, I'm going to to start here by running through uh, a few cells in a Jupyter notebook and just show you how Excel Wings can be used as a tabular data viewer. So, and kind of, you know, making you familiar with the basic syntax. Let me maybe try to make that a tiny little bit bigger. Okay. So, yeah. 
Okay, so I'm just reading in some, some data here, and so I have this data frame, and okay, the resolution is very bad, but um, it's just sometimes it's a little bit difficult to look at a, a large data set or a large data frame within Jupyter Notebook. And if you ever wanted to have a quick view of the underlying data, then there is this um, neat functionality which is called xlinks.view, and you can pretty much throw any Python object at it, and it will just open an, a, a separate new spreadsheet and dump the data in it. And that then just you know, gives you a very comfortable kind of data viewer. You can do whatever you have to do in Excel and have a look, kind of skim through your data here. So that's kind of a, a very neat way. If really you work in, in Jupyter Notebook and you just sometimes want to look at the, the data that you're work, working with. Then, um, that's really just like for, for one-off interactive things. Um, then this here is really kind of an introduction into, into the API. So it's very easy to just like, you know, instantiate a new book here. This will open up a new book, as you could see, and then you can actually talk in a very, very Pythonic way to the underlying data. So you can really just assign that data frame again to like a top left corner. Of, of a spreadsheet, assign it to the value, and then it you know, takes care of uh, doing this the, the date time format transformation. So you will end up having pretty much a, a safe or a, a, a well formatted um, Excel spreadsheet there. And then, like to read it back in, we have these options method, which allow you to again um, use a couple of um, a couple of uh, like convenience functions, so you can really just say that you want to have the, um, the like the thing that you read in. You want to have it arrived as a as a data frame, and also that you want to auto auto expand it. So like you start in in A1, and then you can just read it in, and you're basically back to the original data frame um, that we were uh, putting pushing over in in the previous call. And you have already like the, the index and the headers formatted. So it's a really kind of tight integration with uh, data frames and, and Excel because I guess it's just a natural fit for that. So that's like how you can use um, Excel Wings and, and Jupyter Notebooks in, in an interactive way or like any other uh, environment. So next thing is uh, I would like to introduce you what, what I've kind of invented as the Excel Wings workflow, which really isn't such a big thing. It's really just um, porting over a professional Git workflow, professional uh, coding workflow to, to Excel. And we're going to start there by um, creating a unit test or maybe just like some sort of automated test for Excel. And to do that, I have created a very classic spreadsheet, one that uh, probably all of you know. So we have this um, initial balance, and then we have inflows, we have outflows, and then we have a month end balance, and it just goes over. And then like um, this one here takes over the, the value from the previous month, and so on and so forth. And so, um, you know, maybe something like that happened with that Marks and Spencer case. So somebody went in and did, did some funky stuff and then, well, it was maybe Friday, Friday evening and then somebody called them and they got distracted and, you know, they went to the weekend and then they come back and nobody else, nobody would ever remember what they have done to the spreadsheet. So what you can do here is, let me just see where we are. Well, you can actually very easily write a automated test by using Python and the um, mechanics that we have available, like the PyTest uh, package or like the built-in unit test package. And so what I'm doing here is I'm really just um, testing this, this, uh, the logic that we have in this, in this little spreadsheet. So I'm just setting an initial value, which is um, here in B2, so I'm setting that to 100, and then I'm setting all the, uh, the inflows to 10 and all the outflows to minus five. So we will just really get, every month we will get five additional, um, well, inflows, and at the end of, of the year, we know that by, having, by starting with 100 and 12 times five is 160, that's where we should end up with. So that's like my test here. So I assert that the end value in M5 given those inputs will be 160. And that's really all I need to do to kind of take the, um, well, to, to, kind of, uh, to create an automated test for that. And all I need to do to, to, um, to run that is I need to call PyTest. 
And that runs the unit test. And if it passes, then you get this, um, the green message and everything is fine. And so now when somebody goes in and replaces this maybe with a 30, which is extremely bad because from the outside you really can't tell anything, then you just have to go there and run the test again and you will see that by having this hard-coded value instead of the formula, it will badly fail. And so now, even though that uh, you can't see anything in, in the Excel spreadsheet, um, you do have the test that runs and gives you, you know, security that it's, it's really just nothing else than what you would do in, in, in a sane coding environment. And so uh, you can go one step further and say that uh, you actually want to, you know, um, keep track of this workbook like professional programmers do, and that is in, for example, in GitHub or GitLab. And unfortunately, I closed that, but we will be back in a second. So this is where I keep this online. And so we found out that a lot of people actually, they don't really like to um, work with Git and Excel. So what you could do is you can go into GitLab and you can just replace that file. So for instance, I'll take that here. Let me just make sure I saved it. Um, I can take that and I will drag and drop it here. And then I can give it some description like PyData demo and replace the file. And so what that will do now is it will automatically kick off these unit tests um, on the server. So having committed this um, is automatically now running the tests and I don't have to run them locally anymore. I don't have to be remembered and I can set up, you know, um, I can set up uh, uh, email notifications so when they fail, team heads get notified, my, my uh, peer reviewers get notified and it really works like, like it works on any, um, well, standard coding environment. And you can see uh, it failed here, I can go into that pipeline, I can see the same output as, as we saw before, and it's just for everybody um, viewable what, what really happened. So like the next time that you get into the uh, repository here, you will be greeted by a red cross, so you know instantly that the version that is the latest one has been uh, compromised. And so this is like where it usually starts to get difficult with Git and, and Excel, so, uh, and that's why uh, we created the other tool, which is called Excel Trail. The problem with Git and Excel is that it's really great for versioning and it's really great for kicking off these automated pipelines or these automated tests with Excel Wings, but um, it's gonna be very difficult to see what has changed between these two versions. And so that's where Excel Wings comes in. And so you can actually go, we synchronize here um, these, uh, these, these tools here and you can actually uh, again, you can see the, the PyData demo um, uh, commit here and unlike um, GitLab or GitHub or any of the, of the other providers, we actually look into, into the spreadsheet and show you what really changed inside. So this time you see um, you can make sense out of it because that formula, the red part, has been replaced by a hard-coded number and so you can kind of relate this back to the error that we just saw from running these automated tests with Excel Wings. And that's kind of where the story ends and you can go back, I mean, you can use this for having a peer review also. So it's really um, nothing like a spectacular or new invention, it's really just taking those uh, coding practices that have, you know, have matured over the last couple of decades and applying it really on, on Excel spreadsheets. How much more? Five. All right, so that's been the Excel Wings workflow. And then as the next step, I would like to show you how you can use Python to basically give you access to anything that you have in your Python environment. So uh, often people do actually work with, um, with, with Python, but not everybody on the team is comfortable doing that. So somebody will always want to be able to have this in a spreadsheet. So it's really easy to do that. And the demo I'm, I'm, I'm doing here is, is actually the, um, is like a, a user-defined function. So a user-defined function um, work that you 
write your code in here and you just decorate it with like the function decorator and that's pretty much all you have to do then you import it in excel and you're ready to to rock and roll and so this this quick demo is really just about you know leveraging the power of pandas from within excel so uh, one of the things that always kind of stressed me out is that you could not have an easy way to do a correlation matrix in Excel. So you have like, you can always, you can do a correlation between two data sets, but not like for a whole range of data sets. And um, instead of like having to, to code something complicated, you can really just say, okay, uh, my input is gonna be a data frame by the way, and then you're just gonna call the correlation method from a data frame. And that's, that's all you have to do. And so when we go back to Excel, um, we can just say here, I can use my uh, coral2 function the way I called it, and I do this on that range here with um, a few, I believe, weekly turns for like the Dow Jones index. And this will then provide you with that correlation matrix nicely um, laid out, including the headers and everything, because it's just a data frame, really. And then the next step you can do is actually, um, you can say, okay, the, I, I, like, I, like, I prefer to look at correlations in terms of heat maps, not in, in terms of bare numbers. And that's also something that's really uh, kind of very awkward to do in Excel. So for, for um, fixing that, you can actually use a, a matplotlib plot, and you can just return that as, as a picture in, in Excel. And then it, the best part about it is that it's really like, uh, it really you know, behaves like as it was a, a standard, um, a standard uh, um, Excel chart. So you can actually change the data and it will propagate through here to the, to the user defined function. And then as you can see here, update those um, values here on, on the heat map. So um, that's a really cool way of leveraging your um, matplotlib skills in, into Excel. And I guess, I am about to wrap up, right? So let me just uh, <laughs> so let me just give you a summary of what the, the rest of the, um, the demos would have been. So you can talk to me if you're interested after the talk. Um, so the next one is reporting. That's basically because um, in a recent survey we did, uh, we found out that basically the majority of people are using Excel Wings for automated reporting. And so what we recently did in kind of our um, in the first attempt on a, on a paid add-on is like to have um, template-based reporting, so that uh, business users can actually uh, change their, their templates on their own. So you don't ne necessarily always need to change the Python code to, you know, like if you shift your target cell by one line down, you don't have to necessarily go back to the Python developer and he has to adjust the, 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 the range. Um, you just have like placeholders in Excel and they will find their way from your Python variables to the template. And then uh, Monte Carlo simulation, uh, not a big deal. It's really just um, hooking up Python code to a macro button. Um, do with it anything you want to do. And then the last point is, is the REST API. It's relatively new. It's been around for maybe like a little bit more than a year. And that one is actually giving you a possibility to just say Excel Wings REST API run, and it will expose your whole workbook in a REST API. And that means you can access it over the internet from everywhere. If you have data, you know, that is being updated live, you can pull in the data from like Python requests from a Jupyter notebook from everywhere. It's also great to actually, um, if you do want to move away from Excel and you start building out a, let's say a web application and you have some functionality in Excel <coughs> that you cannot migrate from day one, then that is a, a good way how you can hook these two systems up together. And um, last but not least, um, I've seen this being used at a at the German bank for basically monitoring. So they have a couple of Excel spreadsheets, like legacy spreadsheets, uh, legacy spreadsheets, and they run on the server and they just ping them um, from time to time to you know, get some kind of uh, statistics or uh, like a heartbeat and to also maybe trigger that uh, macro calculation or something. So that's um, basically the REST API. Yeah, and, and that's then basically it. Thank you, and if you want to connect, um, here's my LinkedIn, happy to connect.